I'm John Wildman, I'm the editor-in-chief of FilmsGoneWild.com and we are doing interviews of the Oxford Film Festival in Mississippi. On this segment we're going to be talking about the film's Behalf and Galaxies Tagela Milk Galaxy. We have with us the director of Behalf, Michelle Sway, and Colette Copeland from Gal Galaxies Tagela. She's the director, editor, producer, cast member, I think she did craft services, also held a boom occasionally, um, but we're going to talk about that. So. We always start this um, by having our filmmakers introduce the audience to the film. They have not seen it as yet. So, Colette, why don't you start and tell us about your film? All right. Thank you, John, for having us here today. Um, so my name is Colette Copeland, and I live in Dallas, Texas. And the film Galaxies to Gala is an homage to my mother who passed away three years ago from ALS. And the film... Uh, I am uh, a performance artist, so the film is a performance piece of me in a milk bath, and uh, typically milk baths are done for pregnancy shoots, maternity shoots, uh, or fashion shoots, and so I wanted to push the boundaries of that a little bit. So it starts out as very beautiful and then quickly kind of goes into a dark place. And uh, as an homage to my mother, this is also a piece about matriarchal power, celebrating um, mature feminine beauty and wisdom. Okay, now Michelle, tell us about Behalf. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Sway from Los Angeles, and my film Behalf is so interesting you put us together because we have a method to our madness. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but there's something happening in the bathtub in my film as well. Um, <laughs> so Behalf is a short musical romp, um, and it is about language and my exploration of the domestic space and certain feminine archetypes found in cinema. Um, and yeah, and the runtime is 4.33, so it's really my ode to John Cage's famous composition, 4.33. Um, I also want to say it's so, it's so fun to be in conversation with you two because I'm also a performance artist, and Behalf actually began um, in residency at the Museum of Contemporary Art, and so my process is actually working with performers and training them and rehearsing for months, and then the film is a culmination of all of that. Well, you know, I wanted to put these two films together because there is almost an art installation thing about both of these films. So you go, well, I can see them in, in experimental film uh, programs. I could see them, uh, you know, on the wall at the Walker, uh, you know, in, in, in Minneapolis or, you know, or, or, you know, or, or, or a, uh, um, a museum like that. Uh, I could see that. And then both of you at some point literally had to direct from a bathtub um, so so there is uh, you know so so you know are, are you know usually you're in video village but you know sometimes you're directing from a bathtub um, uh, I would love for both of you to talk about conceptually because again you know we you know, um, there's you know we're not talking about you know a script with dialogue we're talking about images and how we're telling a story or how we're communicating to, so, so there are other challenges with that. And so, Kayla, why don't you start about that, about, about building the architecture for Milk Galaxy? Um, well, I, as you said, John, there really is no script. And I think one of the things that's very different from video performance or from performance art is that you're not acting, it's real. And so it's important. So there, at least in my case, I don't practice before, you know, for my character before I do it. And there's also usually some sort of endurance um, way where I'm challenging my body. So I certainly knew of some specific shots that I wanted, but because of the nature of being in, in the bathtub, I couldn't look at the takes as the cinematographer is filming. And so uh, Gia Randazzo Productions, she did a terrific job. I had never worked with her before and pr she primarily works with still photography. And so this was fun for her to work on an art project. But I had, like I said, I had ideas for some of the individual shots and then 
there is a lot of spontaneous improvisation, right, when, when we're there. And there's also always, you know, kind of behind the scenes funny things that you don't expect are going to happen. But I don't want to like, have a spoiler, but there, I would say in, in thinking about it in terms of traditional film, there certainly is a climax um, and a point where I want my viewer to st feel very uncomfortable um, with that tension. And then also I tend to leave my endings a little bit ambiguous so you're not quite sure, um, you know, it's open to interpretation from the, the viewer. Yeah. yeah. And, and Michelle, in yours, again, you know, we do have a little bit of a, you know, as much as you can have, at, you know, a, with a four minute piece, a twist. Um, but, but there's also, um, more so than that, I was fascinated by the, the change in tonality. Because you, you kind of set us up going, oh, well, it's, it's this thing. And we're fine with that. You know, we're, we're, we're enjoying, you know, uh, you know what, what we're seeing. And then, and then we're going, oh, what, now what's happening? Because we pretty much thought we were going to be done. You know, but, and so, so, again, talk about, again, we're talking about building the architecture of a film like this. And, and again, you are, you know, shaving off point, point, Two five seconds of a frame makes all the difference in the world on a film like yours. Yeah. I love that question. Thank you so much. Um, I think my film is really about exploring the architecture of space. It's the architecture architecture of like the domestic space that a female character lives in. But I really love this idea of subverting also cinematic like archetypes and the sort of like movie images that we've seen in our in our heads. So you think you're starting with, you know, a musical genre and then it's like, no, but that's not what we're doing. So I wanted to go through, you know, is it a silent film? Is it um, is it a musical? Is it are we doing like cinema right now? Are we doing like poetic, you know, cinematic images right now? And those forms are really interesting to me, particularly because the film is also about these oriental iconographies and these images from Chinatown that are so much about, you know, it's the image of something which is not the reality of something. It represents, you know, an idea and how do we get underneath that and how do we subvert it and sort of find new ways of working with them and um, reclaiming them in some ways. The final question I, I have for both of you, and 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 I'm inspired by this by the conversation by, by Colette, something you mentioned before we started this, was that you know the two of you shared a van ride to town from from the from the airport, and you know and so you're so you're able to you know to, to you know anytime you come into a film festival, you you know the first filmmakers you meet become film friends for life, oftentimes, and also you're two female filmmakers. And God knows you guys need to have the special handshake and you better have, you, you, you need to support each other. And I have, I see on my Facebook front feed, female filmmakers that I had a decade ago at my film festivals that are still now taking selfies at award shows with each other. And they're still, and, and, and they are, you know, they're still in touch. They're still like, you know, uh, suggesting hiring, uh, you know, and, 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 and supporting each other's pro projects like that. I would love for both of you to talk about that need, which is still, you think, holy crap, how much longer do we have to like, worry about this, but to support each other's projects, to push each other forward, to give each other opportunities, because, again, as, as, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase Colette um, when she said, like, you know, yeah, it's a testosterone show. Holy crap, you guys. And, you, and, and yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So... Talk about that. Talk, talk about, you know, when you're on tour and then afterwards, how important it is for you to go, my virtual Rolodex, I've got, you know, these women that I can, I can tap into to help. Colette gets the first word. Um, that, that was, there's a lot in, to yes. unpack in that question, Sean. And I, I do think that film festivals much more because our work crosses over into museum and galleries um, and different types of spaces where the film festival circuit is, is a very different space from the museum and gallery space where we also show our work. 
um, and perhaps that space is a little more uh, democratic in terms of gender, right? Um, so for film festivals tend to, in fact, Michelle is the only other female filmmaker I have met so far this, this uh, you know, this weekend. So, you know, I think... We're going to have to introduce you to some more on the red carpet tonight. Yes, I need to, I need to meet more. I need to meet more. Um, so, you know, I, I think as somebody, I've been making art for now a really long time. And so I think things have gotten better and there have been more opportunities but still there are inequities that need to be rectified because if you look at um, the percentages of female versus male getting MFA, you know, it's still a high percentage are female, yet out in the working space, you know, that is not equally represented. So I still think there's work to be done. And in terms of like, how do I want to support, you know, my fellow female artist, um, my own work as a as a scholar and an art critic, you know, I do tend to focus on writing about um, people's work who I love and whose work I think is really important. But I also that leads me towards focusing on um, female queer artists, artists of color, um, art, and you know, I can use my agency as as a critic, as a writer. Um, to support those artists that might not be getting equal representation. Yeah. Michelle. I totally agree. And I think I would just add on, I, um, it's making me think of a conversation. I was um, recently listening to a talk back with Babette Mangol, who is the cinematographer for Chantelle Ackerman. And she was talking about how, you know, in the 70s, they were having this conversation with, with John Dillman and and that they didn't want to be pigeonholed as a female filmmaker, right, in the 70s. And here we are still having the conversation. Of course, like everything, I agree with everything, you know, Colette is saying, and there's such a need for, you know, festivals like these and, you know, conversations like these are so important because we, we're here to tell our stories. But, you know, and the stories can't be told because you know, there needs to be representation, you know, and equal representation. So certain stories don't make it even to the room because of the lack of rep representation. But, um, but I also think that at, on the, uh, you know, at the same time, I don't want to be considered as just a female filmmaker. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm here to make films, I'm here to make work that sometimes are films, sometimes, sometimes are performances. and. I just want to keep supporting the community of, of any gender, any, you know, people from any background who are just here to be rigorous about their work and, and communicate with each other and support each other. Yeah, you know, and, absolutely. And, and I think like, like Christine Fashan, I know, bristles whenever someone says female filmmaker. And, 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 I, and I absolutely understand that. And yet I also look at the numbers. And, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and I know, you know, that, that whether you're saying it out loud or whether you're, you know, or, or, you know, or whether you're, you're in a concrete way, um, through hiring practices, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and, and supporting each other, that it, it still is something that has to be an active energy as opposed to it'll happen. And you go, well, clearly it won't just happen. You know, kind of thing. Um, so, so there, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because it is something that I love to address and and give an out loud verbalization to, because as you're saying, that conversation still has to happen. Yeah, and it's great for festivals and you know curators and programmers to really be conscious of that, and, and you know the conversation has to keep happening. Well, I, I I've been. I loved having the conversation about these two films because when, you know, when we were um, we were screening the uh, um, the films for the folks that we were going to interview today, these were easily two that that, that Chris and I, um, who's behind the camera right now, talked about a lot afterwards. Um, you know, in, in which you go as a filmmaker, that's what you want. You want us to chew on your films afterwards and not forget them immediately. So again, am I able to ask Michelle a question? Yeah, good, good. Okay. So I'm curious for you, the, the most challenging part of directing from the bathtub. <laughs> there were many challenges. <laughs> so many challenges. 
the bathroom that we shot in was so very small. <laughs> so in terms of choosing our lenses, where to hang the lighting, it was very challenging. And of course, um, you know, my my film had a very strict musical element to it. So, and then there was also a very strict choreography to it. So it was like about like figuring out the number of steps and half steps you can get from the door to the bathtub, you know, where the hand placement was in terms of the music. There was um, live music happening in, in, so it was just so, <laughs> it was so challenging. And I sometimes think it's a miracle that we actually made, that it actually turned out. And, you know, we have this footage because, uh, yeah, it, I mean, of course, like you said, like I couldn't see, there was no time for playback. We were, you know, shooting into the wee hours of the morning. So, yeah, <laughs> I want to hear about your challenges too. Well, same thing, you know, I have to tell you, in the, in the little tiny bathroom, you, that camera is right on top of you. Yeah. And I had not met my cinematographer or her assistant before. So, you know, being naked in the bathtub with people you don't know, with the camera like right in your face, um, you know, and then and then the other part for me um, was, you know, how long could I stay under the water, right, before my body was starting to give out, or the milk, there's no water, right, it was milk. Um, but yeah, it's a, people tend to think, oh, you, you shot in the bathtub or a bathroom is, by far the most challenging place because of lighting and your the camera work and yeah. but that didn't deter me because I I also shot another one <laughs> in the bathtub just a, like a few months later so anyway yeah I thought that was a cool coincidence we had so I have to have an offshoot of a, of a bathtub film film festival yeah. um, <laughs> again the films are behalf we've been talking with Michelle Sway she's the director of that film Galaxies to Gala or Milk Galaxy and we talked to Colette Copeland director editor producer and in the film as well thank you both for talking to us thank you so much John this was fun <laughs>